uh, Seb Delaney, he's a good friend of mine. Um, and uh, Bradford owns a racetrack in Arizona called the Bradford Racing School, so we accommodate tons of YouTubers there. We, uh, we actually get some really big, a really big audience there. They're worth following on social media, the Bradford Racing School. We have 150 cars there. It's the uh, official school of Dodge. So we, uh, we um, every Arizona policeman trains there, every Special Forces trains there, uh, Christian Bale did his training with Ford and Ferrari there, Kevin Hartley shows there. So it's actually this real hub, but you guys in England probably don't even know about this. But yeah, Radford has a racing school in, uh, in Arizona, so if you, if you like the YouTubers, follow them, because we have the YouTubers there a lot. Why did you ask the question though? Is it because you like watching stuff on YouTube? Between sailing Monaco, painting stuff. I can't hear it, you got one. No, I like the project, I like sound crack, it's good to see on the team through. I know some of them have tried, but I've not seen you on any. You know, uh, I mean, just wondering if you've done any work with them. And some of them from California, I know they're from Florida, and I'm from Kansas, but I don't know if you've done it Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because we're living in an age where access to content is changing. Like when you were, well, when you were a kid, it was like city film, but when the rest of us were young, um, there was only limited options. It was linear TV, as we know it. And that actually, in the UK, there's probably only primarily three main networks, ITV, BBC, Channel 4, if you really want to watch car stuff. So as the world's changing, getting access to all this car content is easy. And YouTube has actually started to stand up on its own as a really reputable source of great footage. And you know, what we digest as a load of consumers has to be really world class. Do you watch uh, The Car Wizard? The Car Wizard? No. I haven't seen it one. Is it on YouTube? Yeah. No, I, I, I don't watch much TV anyway. Um, I try and avoid them. But what you find is because I got a lot of TV stuff, it actually discounts me from doing stuff on YouTube because I'm trying to try that old. Now, but do you know what, weirdly, my discovery exclusivity has run out. So I could. Okay, am I? Does anyone have any questions? I'm so jealous. You've had a question. This guy up here, I don't think I've got one. Loved it. The question was, did I like the third wing on the Cosworth? I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. And uh, I know it was uh, controversial, but I think it was a really good thing. Hi. Um, overall, the series you've done really do those, um, the series you did with Bill Gunn, is uh, you have answered to a point, but if you would have kept five cars that you actually restored over a series of what five would you kept? Wow, that's a really good uh, question. So what five cars would I keep on all the TV shows? I've done over 20 TV shows now. Um, I would keep the Cosworth. It was my first ever wheeler dealer car. I think that was really cool. I love the third wing uh, story. Uh, I would have kept the Mark 1 Mexico from the Flood cars. I think that's a fantastic car. Um, and probably the Series 1 Lando from the same show. Um, I wouldn't keep the Aston. Or the Healy. TR7, who's that? Who said that? <laughs> I would keep you in the front side. Um, gosh, there's three. Um, yeah, I've seen the Series 1 though. I mean, that's, that's obvious, that's podium. They're the three. Can I stick with three? They're my three. Uh, I'll run home. Uh, has anyone got another question? This is the easiest Q&A ever. Say. Oh, he's got it written down. No, no. Are you okay? Have you been talking long? No. Can you say it again? Say it again. Say it again. What sort of hoops do you have to jump through to actually get them on the road after you've done those four Are we specifically talking about Radford? So, oh, is that a rapid question? So, in California, there's a, a low volume manufacturing legislation. Um, and you have to stick with some significant rules. Now, the lucky thing for us is because we start with a Lotus, it's each. Um, from the driver's seat forward is Lotus, except for the front wishbones, uplights, and lots are different. But from the driver's seat back, it's completely brand new by Rack. It's a new space frame. We lower the engine, we pull it forward, we actually rotate it upwards. The dry stuff on it, it's going to be wishbones, new hub, so we have strong. Awesome. We've strained much further into the kind of the 
low volume space. So every single car has to be documented, it then has to be assessed by CHP uh, before it's given a, a, a chassis number. And actually in California it allows to be 399 over a year, but of course we're making 62. It's a very similar to idea here. What's it sir? Hi. So on the flip side to a lot of the questions that have been asked, Tom, what's the worst car um, you worked on? What did you ever work on? That's a shit car. <laughs> Honestly, it's a terrible car. Do you know why I'm, you know I'm so annoyed about it? I'm genuine enough, it's a terrible, terrible car. And the reason I'm so annoyed is look at the lineage of TRs that came before. And you know, we have the benefit of hindsight now, so we can imagine show that. 